Well, a game has already started, but that's the fun belt, and that game doesn't matter anymore because App State's not, you know, that good, actually. But it is what it is. We got college football to talk about. Kennesaw State, by the way, speaking of a team that's in gold and black, Kennesaw State is moving to Conference USA in 2024, so that's good for them. That's good for them, but we're talking about now. We're talking about 2022. And we're talking week number eight in college football. Somehow we made it eight weeks in the season. I don't know how, but we made it eight weeks into the season. We are we are getting closer to November. We are getting closer to knowing a little more. I don't know if we're going to find... Well, we're going to find out something this week. We're going to find out a lot this week. We are going to find out a lot. Um, first things first, let's get to that noon slate. Not a lot in it. Um... The Balls right now, they're number three in the country. That's right, number three, Tennessee. I know, crazy, right? They don't have uprights. They better have some before this game starts against Tennessee Martin, who's ranked in the FCS right now um, at like a comfortable number 18, but that's not going to matter. Again, this is a top five team in the F in the FBS taking on, you know, a top 25 FCS team, but still an FCS team, so... Naturally, I don't think Tennessee will have a letdown here. I think Hendon Hooker and company will get the job done against the Skyhawks. And then, you know, the big one in this window, Syracuse Clemson, number 14 Syracuse, number 5 Clemson, Sean Tucker, that orange offense, that orange defense especially. They clamped down NC State. Yeah, NC State had a backup quarterback in, but they still clamped down on them. And NC State's still ranked, by the way. So, just because they're off, doesn't mean we don't get to mention them. A lot of teams are off this week, so there's not as many games uh, to talk about. And, you know, I thought, you know, maybe this would be the week. But it turns out, it'll probably be next week where things, you know, look light, but maybe a little crazy. But that's next week. We'll talk about that next week. Um... DJ Ulaga Valet and, and Clemson, I mean, I've been saying it all year that Clemson's, you know, not that good and stuff like that, but they've steadily improved. They continue to prove me wrong, and until otherwise, um, I, I, honestly, like, Clemson could just cruise all the way to 12-0, and and nobody would, you know, even bat an eye. Cause that's just how the ACC has been. Like, it's still isn't that great, unfortunately. And... You know, Syracuse, I think, will give Clemson a fight. Will it be like last year? We'll find out. Um, Iowa, Ohio State. Now, I don't know what Fox was thinking by putting this game at noon. <laughs> you know, to watch Iowa's, you know, pretty bad offense in, in a, in a um, nationally televised game, you know, over the air. I don't know who was responsible for that. But... C.J. Stroud, all he has to do, all this man has to do is not let Iowa's defense rattle him at all. Don't let this Iowa defense scare you. It scared Michigan a little bit, but it didn't scare him enough. They, this, Iowa, this Iowa defense is still a scary bunch. They will still, they, they will still rattle you if you don't prepare properly. And all C.J. Stroud, again, all he has to do is just not let Iowa take the ball away from him. Not let Iowa get in the backfield and sack him. Just don't let Iowa do anything. Pick them apart. And Because we know, we know Iowa's offense can't do anything. We know that by now. That's why they're 3-3. Three and, three. And, and Ohio State is unbeaten. And then Cincinnati has finally gotten back up into the top 25. Ben Bryant, Cincinnati's defense, you know, they've been able to sneak off win after win after win after getting beat by Arkansas first week of the season. And, you know, they play an SMU, an SMU team that doesn't play a lot of defense, but they do score a lot, so we'll see if Cincinnati can limit that. And that's a similar case to another team in the American who we'll talk about as we go into the afternoon slate and first things first we got to talk about Boston College Wake Forest um, honestly the real question here is can Sam Hartman 
and the Deeks, you know, what, how, how much are they going to score? Because that, that's the real question here because Boston College just isn't very good at all. Like, we're, I, think I'm, I think the bigger question is, is can Boston College even keep up? Can they even keep up? We'll find out, but I doubt it, in all honesty. But, you know, crazier things do happen in the ACC. Crazier things do happen. But there are three games that need to be watched in this afternoon window, at, you know, that 2.30, 3.30 window. First up is Texas, Oklahoma State. Another ranked matchup, another top 20 matchup. Spencer Sanders hurt his shoulder. Um, so who knows if he'll even play or not. You know, that Horns defense that, you know, hasn't been the greatest at times. Yeah, Spencer Sanders would need to play. He would need to play, you know, to maybe, you know, get at this Horns defense. Because, again, you pass on them. You know, you pass on the Texas Longhorns, you will get yards. You run on them, you will you you'll still get yards, but you won't get as much. Again, you know, see you know, see teams like Oklahoma or Alabama for examples of that. You know, you, you know, you can run, but you won't get much after like a first initial burst of you know excitement. And Quinn Ewers, he's been he's been just doing his thing. You know, doing his thing for. Maybe the rest of the season he has, because again, you know, Arch is coming. Um, he's just been cruising along, and he's been playing some pretty good football. It hasn't been perfect, but, you know, with the backfield that he has, with the receivers that he has, you know, things are looking up for Texas. Things are looking up. Oklahoma State got to bounce back after this lost TC. They got to bounce back. That defense did not look great. They got to do better than this. And you know Texas might pick them apart too if they, if they don't improve at all on defense. Ole Miss LSU is another one, um, another highlighted game for me. You know, obviously all the ranked matchups, there are five of them, and plus this L Ole Miss LSU game, those, those are the games I have highlighted. Um, the Rebels, they got that rushing attack, heading up to take on Brian Kelly's Tigers in Death Valley. The big question here is, can LSU contain the run? They can't play a little offense, but, you know, it's kind of it's kind of wishy-washy at times. But, you know, LSU has to, you know, they have to keep up like Auburn did. They have to, they have to play like Auburn did to have even a slight chance. They have to play a little bit more defense than Auburn did against Ole Miss to have even more of a chance. You know, LSU can score. LSU can play, you know. With the best of them, it's just, you know, Ole Miss might be too much for them. They might be too much. Because, I mean, it was an evenly matched game with Florida last week. So, you know, who knows? And then the big one, UCLA and Oregon as Dorian Thompson Robinson and Bo Nix will battle in the Pacific Northwest in a top 10 matchup. The game of the week right here. <laughs> I mean, you got two great offenses, two defenses that can play and make big plays when needed. This one is going to be fun. You know, if you're not watching Ole Miss LSU or you're not watching Texas Oklahoma State, you're watching this game for sure. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be probably one of the highest scoring games of the season. It won't eclipse Alabama Tennessee, but it'll eclipse, you know. Some of these other games that have been the high scoring, high octane, fun games in college football this year. And then Memphis Tulane again. Memphis, um, as I was talking about, you know, SMU's defense being bad, you know, going up against Cincinnati. Um, Michael Pratt and the Green Wave are finally back in the top 25. They might be able to just, you know, throw it all over Memphis because this Memphis team can score as well. But they also have a bad defense, just like SMU. They have a bad defense. They can score a lot, but they have a bad defense. And that's a recipe for, you know, something. That's a recipe for something because Tulane, you know, again, they have that one loss. And their defense, they, they know how to play. They know how to play. But, you know, it's any given Saturday around here. You know, with the way this season's been going, it's any given Saturday. So we'll see how this game goes and we'll see if Tulane can stay ranked or not. In the evening we got a couple. 
we got a couple of games in the evening um, that are compelling. You know, two of them more so than the other one. And the first of these is Mississippi State, Alabama. Mississippi State hanging on just like NC State in the top 25. You wonder if Will Rogers could do the same thing Hendon Hooker did to Bama, which is throw all over him for a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns because this Bama defense is not good. It's not. Penalty, they're the most penalized team in the country. Nick Saban is livid. He's going to be livid for pretty much the entire season. Pretty much, the, he's been livid the entire season, but he's going to be real, real mad the rest of the way if Alabama can't clean up a lot of things. You know, the, you know, some people are going to be saying, like, Bryce Young and the Tide are going to bounce back, like, real easy. You know, it's going to be a blowout. But I don't think that. I don't think that exactly. I think this game will be a lot closer. You know, it's just, you know, can Mississippi State actually, you know, play a full game? Because they've had some games where they should have won. You know, Kentucky being a big example, or LSU, you know, the two games they've lost so far. They probably should have won those games, but for whatever reason, they did not. And, you know, it was poor play by them to where they couldn't win those games. So, will this be the same thing? Against Alabama, we'll find out. Alabama, again, the concern is defense. You know, they're going to be at home, so, you know, no crazy road environments to work with in this one. Minnesota Penn State, the whiteout game from Penn State this year. The Gophers, they don't have Tanner Morgan, but they do have Mo Ibrahim. And is he going to put up similar numbers that Michigan did? against the Nittany Lions. Sean Clifford and company got a bounce back. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. After that humiliating loss, like, you know, like I'm not even sure Clifford's going to play, but I know James Franklin and company got up. They got to get something going because, I mean, this, this game right here, you know, this is before Ohio State. This is this is your season right here, you know, Minnesota, Penn, you know, Minnesota, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, the, these these three games right here are Penn State season, and it's and, it, and that season is, you know, slipping away from them. Another season of Penn State having, you know, some really high expectations, looking like a really good team, and then they just completely miss the mark. And... You know, it, it's it's going to be something. It's going to be something that Penn State loses this game. It really is going to be something. I'm really going to be laughing if they do because they really shouldn't. They really shouldn't. They. It's going to be a tough one, though, I think. And then my game of the week, the, my game of the week again comes for the Big 12. Kansas State, TCU. Oh, boy. Quentin Johnston, Max Duggan, a connection that has been on point all season long. A, a TCU defense that is hard hitting. They know how to make the big plays when they make them. Because, I mean, that second half against Oklahoma State was a master class of how you play defense. First half wasn't so great, but that second half and overtime was absolutely amazing by them. And then you got Adrian Martinez and the Wildcats who will run, run, run him. Martinez and Deuce Bond. They'll run, 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 and Martinez will throw it on Yitzhu. And that Kansas State defense ain't no slouch either. They are a difficult bunch to go up against. They are a difficult bunch. It's hard to hard to go up against them and you know win a game. I mean, you're you're you know, people are still wondering, and I'm still wondering weeks later how did Tulane beat this team? But this one's gonna be a slobber knocker, a top twenty matchup. My game of the week. Not everybody's game of the week because, again, a lot of people are going to be into that big top 10 matchup of UCLA and Oregon. But this is my game of the week, in my opinion. Yes, I know. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something. It's gonna be something to see. You know, are there gonna be even less unbeaten's after this? Because there's what eight or nine left. You know, a few one-loss teams left too. A lot of teams with two, three losses in the top, well, two losses at least in the top 25 right now. So, things are changing. This is a this is a crazy season, and I want more. And we're going to get more this Saturday with five ranked matchups. And 
13 overall top 25 matchups. Cannot wait for this Saturday. Enjoy the rest of the slate because, again, games are going on right now in the fun belt. And then Thursday, and then Friday, and then, oh, Saturday. It's going to be delicious. Oh, man. I can't wait. Cannot wait. So, until, until you know, Saturday night, you know, it'll be, it'll be around the same time as last week, you know, for the first time in, you know, in a while. We don't have to talk about, you know, Pac-12 after dark at like 2 a.m. So, I'm happy for that. So, another, you know, late, but not super late Saturday night, you know, that we'll be back to do this recap. Take care, and I'll see you all tomorrow night to talk. The NFL.